Hello, my name is Jeff Layer and I'm the Vice-Chancellor of the University of Wolverhampton. And I'm really sorry that I can't be here with you in person today at this really exciting conference. I've looked very carefully at the, the conference brochure and the programme and it looks really exciting and really engaging. It's only a few months ago that I was in Abuja talking to a number of you about the role of universities and entrepreneurship creating enterprising citizens and enterprising students. So I really wish the conference the best and, and I'm going to try and say a few words now about entrepreneurship, the role of universities and how important they are in shaping economic and societal development. Now universities have been around an awful long time. The University of Wolverhampton, for example, has been around for nearly 200 years and it's important to reflect on the nature of our heritage, why we were created and what our role in life is. We began life just after the start of the Industrial Revolution in, in the industrial heartland of the West Midlands uh, where much manufacturing takes place, where a large amount of coal mining took place and a big steel industry. So very much at the heart of the industrial revolution within the UK and today very much part of the industrial heartland and developing and generating economic growth. Now the university was established as a mechanics institute and it was quite common in that time to create single focus organisations. And what our Victorian forefathers were looking for was an institution that would develop and train the workforce. It was very clearly about making sure that with the development of new technologies, the development of new machines, that there was a key need to make sure that the workforce is trained, the workforce can use them, and that the workforce looks at different ways of developing the manufactured product. And that is why the University of Wolverhampton was established nearly 200 years ago. And very interestingly, shortly after that, in the 1860s, after the Great Exhibition in the UK, there was a recognition that our manufactured products were not as good as in some other parts of the world. And in order to focus on global economy and economic competitiveness, our Victorian forefathers introduced the School of Design into the city of Wolverhampton. Designed very much about refining the finished product, about looking at why and how we were making things so that we once again became globally competitive and, and with a free um, and full agenda on economic growth. So that's very much about the heritage of the university. And we, we've grown significantly since then. Today, 23,000 students across four campuses in the UK and a number of campuses abroad. And, and we have a big international presence. But our focus and our rationale and our whole raison d'etre has not really changed. We are very much about vocational higher education, very much about making sure that our students contribute to the economy and have the skills that are required for that. So for example, this film today is being shot not by, not by commercial photographers and commercial film producers, but by students on our video and film production course getting real-life work opportunity, real-life work experience to enable them to go into the workplace after they've finished their degrees in a slightly different place to many of the students that will compete with them for jobs because they've got real experience and they're doing an excellent job here today. So university focused very much on entrepreneurship, enterprise, and, and why? And some of that is about our role. A very famous um, educationalist and government figure, um, Lord Deering, published a report in the late 1990s about the role and the future of higher education. And that came together with a raft of other research and other evidence about the value of higher education. We know a number of things about the value of higher education and about developing our citizens and developing workforces. So for example, Evidence from the Institute of Education in London tells us that graduates are likely to live longer than non-graduates, thus contributing more. Graduates 
are less likely to use the health service than non-graduates because they know how to look after themselves. They know those key ingredients about a better health, better lifestyle. They're likely to earn more money than non-graduates from the same peer group, giving them a better start in life and allowing them to contribute more to the economy. They're less likely to be involved in the criminal justice system simply because of what they know and the values that have been developed with them. They're more likely to be able to invest time, energy and resource in their children's education, which is all about developing society over periods of time. All of which means that investing in higher education and using higher education wisely is a way in which we get the sort of economic development and the awareness around societal needs that we need to have. But when, when Lord Deering looked at higher education, and he did a, a really fundamental review, he thought about what is the role of higher education going forward. Now, if you go back in history, you'll see in our medieval ages, the big source of strength for our medieval towns was its castles. In the industrial age, the source of prosperity was our factories. Today, it, with the new technologies coming apace, for the 21st century, it is the universities that are the drivers of economic and regional growth, all of which are crucial to the development of individuals and organisations. When we look to see what that value is in the way in which higher education can be portrayed and can develop, then we see, again, a number of aspects of, act of activity that are really fundamentally crucial, not just in the UK, but in the broader world where we as a university work in different parts of the globe looking at the development of economies in those areas. But how do we sort of address entrepreneurship and enterprise? Crucial aspects to today's society. Well, that's very much about how a university perceives itself and how it places itself. I've told you already about the video and film production students. Well, when we look at the nature of our programmes and our courses, we are a provider of vocational higher education. That means that we focus very much on developing the intellectual mind to, and with problem-solving skills, with skills of communication, with analysis, with concept design, in order that they can move forward into the workplace. How do we do that? We do it in a number of ways. One is through our academic staff many of whom come from industry, from practical experience of delivery of certain types of activity to demonstrate with our students how that works and how we take it. Fundamental to that. The second is also about how we try to make sure that our students don't just work in the classroom, but they're in design studios, they're in laboratories, they're in workshops, and they get work experience. So our intent is that all of our undergraduate students have an opportunity to engage in some form of work experience during the course of their studies. We include within that aspects of volunteering, which I'll return to. But how, how, what sort of jobs are our students engaged in? Well, we focus very much on the nature of curriculum-based jobs, curriculum-based experience. So in our business and management areas, when we're talking about marketing and market research, what we want are real live projects for our students. Case studies that they work on, tasks that they work on, to a particular start point and a particular finish point that they have to deliver on time. Similarly, in areas such as photography or in areas such as, as some of our science areas, we look to see what sort of work experience we can gain and glean for those students. So entrepreneurship, enterprise, how we develop the, the intellectual mind, how we provide opportunities. There's no correct or right way of doing this. There are simply challenges and we have to take whatever opportunity we can. But most importantly, we have to create opportunities. Now our students tend to go into a whole range of different workplaces after graduating with us. 
in firms of accountancy, lawyers, civil engineers, nurses, teachers, but a significant proportion of our graduates do not go into professions and careers in that way. What they do is they use their undergraduate education to establish their own type of business. They work for themselves. We have a classic example where a firm of video and film production uh, students created their own company called Stone Throw Media, working f with the university. And I'll say a little bit about that. Because one of the things that's important is to provide people opportunity, to provide people the space and the breadth and support that they need to establish their own business. We have a science park in the university, and in that science park we have 140 different tenant companies where we've set out to say, here you can start your business. You can come to this particular science park, start your business, and we will support you. By creating a, a, an organisation within the university called Business Solutions, who've done a lot of work in Nigeria around entrepreneurship, what we do is we support the, the business case and the business plan that goes with the thinking around a business. We then provide a grant, a small innovation voucher, through government funds and government support. And that particular company is established with some office space within our science park. We you know, rent that accommodation to them and rent the package of support. But it starts at a low base and gradually increases because what we want that business to do is to be successful. And our business ad advisors work with those graduates and help develop them and develop the skills of that particular organization. Many of them have gone on to thrive, thrive in a really big way. And it's, it's always pleasing to see the success of those graduates. And of course, we've divided our science park into different themes. There is a creative industries quarter. There is also a high-tech area, a science and engineering area. So we work very much with the students to give them the opportunity. Recently, we've purchased a Formula 3 racing car. Now you might ask, why have we purchased a Formula 3 racing car? And that is to develop the practical engineering skills of our students. So they go out into the workplace talking about and being able to demonstrate the practical skills as well as the theoretical skills that they've developed and puts them at the heart of industry and the heart of that particular type of approach. But we don't just work with our undergraduates, we work with students at all levels, including some of our research degree students. And what they get is the opportunity to be in the workplace and to develop particular skills. One really good example of how we help with entrepreneurship and enterprise is through a scheme called the Knowledge Transfer Partnership. And that's a national UK government scheme. But what we decided to do in Wolverhampton was to say there are certain, the numbers of, of projects you can do under the, the Knowledge Transfer Partnership scheme is relatively limited. So we will invest in trebling that particular scheme to give our students an economic advantage and to help and develop and shape regional economic development. We look at a particular small or medium-sized enterprise and it identifies a particular need it has. But it doesn't have the capability or the resource base or the staff base to invest time in it. So what we do with that company is invest a student in it for two to three years to look at the particular issue that the company itself has identified to work with that company. And it may be around things like marketing. It may be things about design in terms of product. But most organisations that have taken one of our students into a role with them for two to three years has seen the turnover dramatically increase. Many of those students have gone on to be employed with the organisation because it's worked to such a great extent. But what they've all done is develop the skills that they need in order to be able to be involved at the heart of economic development. Now, of course, particular economies have particular needs. One of our needs within the UK at the moment is for graduates. 
by the year 2020, 50% of job vacancies will be requiring graduates. And that's why it's important to invest in higher education. It's why it's important to invest in the development of the skills for those individuals by providing the opportunities around enterprise entrepreneurship. But it's not just in the paid employed area that it's important. Our students get experience from volunteering. 6,000 volunteering opportunities undertaken by University of Wolverhampton students every year, where they work within the third sector, the not-for-profit sector, where they work on particular projects, initiatives, and where they seek to engage with different communities and demonstrate both what they can do, but also what they learn through that process. Key aspect of any enterprise and entrepreneurship program is not simply the development of the skills that goes with it, but it's about what does the individual learn from it. And that is the same in many aspects of life. We all make mistakes. What's important is what we learn as a result of making that mistake. And that's the key issue about entrepreneurship projects. It is about being able to reflect on what you've done, how you've done it, what you did if you were to start again, and how you would move on. Because whilst there is a skill base and a curriculum base to look at enterprise and entrepreneurship, what's really important though, is not just what we do today, but to reflect on what we need to do tomorrow and the years after that. Because one of the things about the university is we have a commitment to capacity building, to change across the globe. We invest 1% of all our international learnings in corporate and social responsibility projects in different countries in which we work. And that's crucial because it means that we're engaged in communities and societies around the world. And that's part of why one of the things we want to talk about today is our Centre for African Leadership and Entrepreneurship, a new centre that we've set up specifically to focus on the development around needs within Africa, around entrepreneurship, and how we can bring some of our experiences, some of our learning, and share that with individuals and organisations. And that's part of our drive and part of what we want to do is make a very clear statement today that my colleagues are ready to work with you. They're set up to work with you. They know the African region. They know what they can do. And they're steeped in the development of entrepreneurship and enterprise. But most importantly, they work with people to create economic change and economic development which allows you to invest in societal change as well. I hope the rest of the conference goes really well. I hope we all learn many things, and it's, this is merely a starting point to further change and economic development across the area. Thank you very much.